Three years after telling Oprah Winfrey she didn't want to be alive longer when living in the UK, Meghan Markle has admitted she has barely skimmed the surface when it comes to talking about the suicidal thoughts she experienced while a working member of the royal family. Along with her 39-year-old husband, Prince Harry, the Duchess of Sussex, who is 43 today, has started a campaign to address child safety online. Harry and Meghan said they wanted to be there so they had a place to go for help when they hugged and spoke with parents who lost their children to suicide, which was frequently linked to social media usage. The Royals discussed the launch of the Parents' Network with anchor Jane Pauley in an interview for American broadcaster CBS. During her time as a working royal, Meghan initially disclosed her suicidal fears in a shocking interview with Oprah in 2021. She now states that she believes people will be helped by her honesty and that it will inspire them to see their friends. Donning a 12,800-pound Cartier necklace and 1,485-pound Ralph Lauren Coords, the Duchess remarked, I think part of our healing journey, certainly part of mine, is being able to be really open about it when you've been through any level of pain or trauma. And while I haven't truly touched the surface of what I've gone through, I do believe that I would never wish for another person to feel that way. Therefore, if me sharing what I have overcome will save someone or inspire someone to really genuinely check in on them and not assume that everything is okay just because they look good, then that's worth it. And I would never want someone else to be making those kinds of plans or not be believed. I'll take the loss on that. The Duchess of Sussex claimed the Buckingham Palace HR department rejected her request for assistance because she wasn't a paid employee. After telling Oprah in 2021 that she couldn't be left alone and that she didn't want to be alive anymore, I was incredibly embarrassed to confess it to Harry in particular, as I am aware of the extent of his loss. The speaker recalls. However, I was aware that if I kept quiet, I would act on my desire to end my life. Megan revealed that she thought of taking her own life because she thought it was better for everyone. She said, I knew that if I didn't say it, that I would do it. I simply wanted to stop being alive. And that was a constant notion, very real, very clear, and very frightening. I recall how he simply held me. I mentioned that I had to go get assistance elsewhere. I need to go somewhere because I've never felt like this before. I exclaimed. I was informed that it wouldn't be beneficial for the university and that I couldn't. She claimed that pictures from that night haunt me and that she was compelled to attend a charity event at the Royal Albert Hall in January 2019 after confiding in her spouse. She told Oprah that feeling abandoned by the palace, she later contacted one of Diana, Princess of Wales's closest friends. That was the last time I saw my passport, my driver's license, my keys, all of that gets turned over. The woman remarked when she joined the family. Meghan claimed that Harry's decision to relocate to Los Angeles had saved my life. Harry and Meghan also met with a group of parents who lost their children to suicide during today's pre-recorded interview. The couple was shown on camera embracing their grieving parents, with Meghan expressing her happiness that they had come. Host Jane Pauley added that the couple was no strangers to cyberbullying. Harry also mentioned that everyone can lose a loved one, which is the scariest thing about social media. We frequently discuss how, in the past, you knew what children were up to if they were living under your roof. Thankfully, they are secure. However, people may suddenly be ending their own lives in a day by using a tablet or phone in the same room and falling into these rabbit holes. Megan also talked about their personal experiences with Archie and Lilbet. The Duchess remarked, Our kids are young, three and five years old and they're amazing, but as parents, all you want to do is protect them. We're glad to be able to contribute to positive change, even if we recognize that there is still more work to be done in the internet realm given what we can observe. The Duke just says, if you know to help, in response to the broadcaster's statement that, you hope that when your children ask for help, someone is there to give it, he stated. We've reached a point where practically every parent needs to be a first responder. Furthermore, not even the world's greatest first responders could recognize the warning signals of a potential suicide. The horrifying aspect of this is that, after host Jane Pauley remarked that it was a modest beginning, Megan continued, noting that you had to start somewhere. What if this was my son or daughter? 
should be the perspective that everybody witnessing this or having the power to affect change should adopt. Your son or daughter who I love and who comes home happy, and one day our entire lives change right under my roof because of something completely outside of my control. And from a parent's perspective, there is no other way to look at it except to try to figure out a solution. In an effort to address kids' safety online, Prince Harry and his spouse Meghan Markle have started a project. The couple's new campaign, which they are launching with the R12 Foundation, includes the interview. Harry and Meghan have joined an organization called the Parents Network, which brings together parents to provide a safe and supportive community that is available to all parents and caregivers navigating the complex digital world. People who have first-hand knowledge of the agony and ruin caused by social media use are included in this group. Our mission is to prevent anyone else from suffering the way we have, reads a description of the network on the Sussex's Archwell Foundation website. Each of us has been through something no parent should ever have to experience. We are here to support parents whose children are harmed by social media. All parents and caregivers navigating the complicated digital world are welcome to join our secure and encouraging community. On the Foundation's website, a film depicting parents who have lost their children to suicide due to internet harm has been posted as part of the campaign, which goes by the hashtag hashtag no child lost to social media. Three manuals covering other social media platforms, such as Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok have also been added to the website. Repurposed in partnership with the Social Media Victims Law Center is how the website describes the tutorials. They were put together with help from the center's online social media guidelines, and they provide details on the functions of each site as well as suggestions for how parents can enhance their child's safety when they use them. Among the families discussed in the interview were Donna and Chris Dolly, whose 17-year-old son, CJ, committed suicide following what they believed to have been social media-fueled sadness. They informed Jane that they thought he might have a demon in his bedroom. We were unaware of what had happened to our son, Donna added. You know, he drove a really nice automobile. He enjoyed his work. He was a content child. Parents who cherished him, sisters who loved him. Chris continued, he went on to say that he passed away holding his phone since he was so dependent on it. That's how addicted he was, Donna added. He still had the phone in his hand. He couldn't even take his own life without going viral first. The most crucial aspect of the group, according to group facilitator Leora Wolf Prozen, is that members will communicate with one another. In a year, we're going to stop expecting you to be done with your grief. She informed Jane, we will no longer tell you that we are weary of hearing about the negative effects of the internet. We will repeatedly mention your child's name because they were real and important. And that we are aware that you were not at fault. Is that all there is to it? You weren't at fault. You experienced this. And with you, as a community, we now get to construct something. Harry and Meghan were joined in the conversation by Taj and Celine Swanson Jensen. Tanner, their kid, overdosed on narcotics that were pushed to him online and died as a result. Brandy and Tony Roberts, whose daughter and Lynn committed suicide as a result of cyberbullying, were also interviewed. Perla Mendoza conversed with Harry and Meghan as well. Eli, his kid, passed away after taking an internet medicine that turned out to be a fatal amount of fentanyl. Jane questioned them about why they do all this. The short answer, according to Taj, is so that others won't have to endure what we have and can carry on living. I don't expect anything from anyone, declared Perla. This is merely an act of love performed in memory of my son and all the other kids who died from fentanyl. This is for the father who refuses to leave his home and the mother who is unable to get out of bed. I also stand here for them, and I hope that when the time comes for me to return home one day, my kid will greet me with a Good job, Mama. Harry and Meghan have brought up the matter on multiple occasions since relocating to the United States. They will also be the subject of attention when they make their official visit to Colombia on Vice President Francia Marquez's invitation. The Sussexes visited Nigeria in May, where they participated in a variety of activities over three days. This journey to the South American country will be their second official tour of the year. The vice president stated that the couple would engage in many initiatives connected to protecting young people in physical and virtual settings, although the Archwell Foundation has not disclosed specifics of their schedule. During the interview, Megan chose to wear 1,485-pound Ralph Lauren Coords and a 12,800-pound Cartier jewelry. 
She wore the 57 diamond yellow gold choker to the Invictus Games opening ceremony in the past. Megan looked summery in identical Ralph Lauren Coords, adding to the array of American brands. The Duchess wore the brand's 915 pounds of Anne trouser in the same shade as the 570 pound Adrian relaxed fit broadcloth shirt in mauve. Megan chose to go with her go to natural style wearing her hair in loose waves and highlighting her features with a thin amount of makeup. The mother of two applied highlighter and a creamy foundation to her skin and brushed up her eyebrows with a dark pencil. Black eyeliner and mascara brought attention to her eyes, and a rich, creamy lip shade completed the ensemble.